Okay, so to, um, to actually edit your code, you're going to need a text editor. Um, some people like simple ones, some people like complicated ones. I just go with a pretty simple one called um, Sublime Text Editor. And so there it is. So you go to the home page, you go to download, and then you download, um, your computer's probably 64-bit, so download Windows 64-bit, um, run that, it's pretty lightweight. Like yes, accept everything, it should be a quick install. Um, I'm going to close. Um, oh, it's because I have Sublime already open here. Let's close that. Okay, run that, click finish, and bam, so now you have a text editor. So all this actually does is it's an editor to let you um, manipulate your code in your text. So you should have Sublime installed, um, and then you should um, make your uh, your text file for the tutorial a .py um, file. And uh, you can actually do that by actually doing new um, text document. Okay, now it's txt, and then doing file, um, save as, and then change the file save type to all types, and then call it, you know, file name or whatever, and then .py, and then click save. And since I've actually associated that file type with Sublime, it instantly becomes a Sublime icon, and then you run that. And then, um, bam, and now it's open in Sublime, and you can have multiple files open with tabs and everything. So it's a .py file, and uh, and uh, I have a tutorial.py that I will be using uh, to show you how to code in Python. Um, thanks. Okay, so to get started with Python, you need to go to python.org. What we need to do is go to downloads. Um, and just immediately download uh, what should for now be 3.7.3. It'll be 3.x at some point. Um, just download that. And then when that's good to go, I need to update my Python anyway. When that's good to go, open that and run that. Um, so make sure to click Add to Path Install for All Users, and then just click Install Now. Click Yes, Accept Everything. Um, let's see here. It may take a second, may not. Um, I don't know how heavy Python is. So that was set up, and then all you need to do is come down here and type in cmd, that's how you can open a command prompt. And now that that's open, you should be able to say python dash dash version. There you go. And it'll say 3.7.3. .3. Okay, and so now I'm going to teach you some command prompt functions here. You'll say dir, to I mean directory, it'll tell you what directory you're in, which is this is your path, like your C drive, users, that's my name. And then, um, yeah, and so we see desktop is here. So my tutorial is on the desktop, so we'll do cd for change directory, and we'll say desktop. Now we're on the desktop, and I'll do dir again to show it's on my desktop. And um, it's tutorial. So now, now that Python was installed, super quick, super simple, we just say Python, and then we say the name of the Python file I wish to execute. So we'll set that over here, and we'll open the file that I've opened, uh, the tutorial file, and the um, command prompt. So we don't need that open anymore. So this is a text file that I've just added with the py extension instead of, you know, .txt. And all it says in Python is print, this is a tutorial. And so now, we say Python to call on the program, and then say, hey, execute this file that I've defined. And then you click enter. And it says, this is tutorial. And now you're all set. You just have to download Python, check to see it was installed by asking for the version. And um, yeah, this is good to go. I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff in just a second. Um, yep, and show you all the data structures and how to program in general. Thanks. Okay, so um, this is Kyle. Um, I'm going to make a uh, brief tutorial on uh, just kind of coding in general. So um, this is, I'm going to do this in uh, Python. Um, Tiny Kingdoms is written in GML, we will uh, handle that later, but Python is the easiest language to, um, to kind of demonstrate the logic and the thought process of coding, so that is what we're going to be doing here. Okay, so for example, uh, it's very, as long as you're mathematically inclined, you should be able to grasp this uh, pretty easily. So for example, we're going to have this. We're going to say x equals 5. And you should always put a colon at the end of uh, every line. Um, in Python, it's not required. Um, it's generally ignored. But in every other main language, you always put a colon at the end of your lines to signify it is the end of a line. Okay. So let's see. So we're going to say x equals 5. And then we're going to say print x. Bada boom. So now we come over here to the terminal. And we say, uh, we call Python. And then we call the name of the file, tutorial.py. And then... That's literally what happens. We just, we, we define x, and we say uh, print x. And we don't even, uh, this is a comment, so that's how you, like, tell Python to ignore these lines. Uh, this is the list of stuff we're going to be going over. Um, so you could literally just say print 5. And looky there. So so it's it's all about variables and, uh, like, dynamic programming and everything. So, okay, so we'll comment that out for now. Um, let's see. Okay, so now we're going to go over something called a list. Well, so we're going to go over things called lists. Um, pretty much, lists are, let's call it my list. Uh, and then we will do, um, so my list is the name of the, you know, the list variable. And then in Python, we define it with brackets. And then we do one, two, three, four, five. Cool. And now, <clears throat> so a list is Python's equivalent of an array. 
Um, the difference is that um, an array is a very fixed size, and a list dynamically grows and shrinks based on if it's filled or not. So in other languages, you can have an array that is length 10, and each of the indices are empty. They're just kind of like buckets. There's nothing inside of them. While an array, I mean, while a list in Python, uh, right now there's five there's five uh, values and as soon as we remove one of them it'll dynamically shrink to only length of four so it will grow and shrink accordingly that, that that's kind of uh, one of the main reasons python's very easy and uh, intuitive to understand it's a list it's not necessarily an array um, so let's see here so now we can do prints and then for those of you who've never programmed at all uh, lists and arrays in every language um, except for matlab will uh, indexing begins at zero so if we actually say zero what should happen is it will print one because index zero is actually the first index. So that's zero, index zero, index one. And you could think of it as necessarily it starts right here. And then when you call for an index, it scans across one, like it scans across one index. So zero starts right there. And then we, uh, we kind of, we scan across. So, okay. So let's see here. Um, we can have it do, check this out. So since we know there's integers in there, we can do, let's print that and then let's kind of, you know, let's throw an expression in there. So let's grab the value at index zero and add it to the value at, let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, at four, which is actually value five. And this should come up with, so this in itself is actually a variable, right? This will be a variable that points to the value one. And this is the variable that points to the value five. And so now we should have the value six, okay? Um, and then as you can tell, print is what makes it actually show up in the terminal. So, so we have print, and then we have parentheses, right? This is very mathematically oriented. So we have um, the parentheses kind of indicate, okay, print, uh, and then for the sake of precedence. So we print everything within the parentheses, and it's one plus five. Cool. Now, <coughs> oh gosh. So now, um, let's see. So those are lists. And then there's some, there's some more interesting things you can do, but uh, this is, Python is very flexible, uh, very intelligent. Um, so, but this doesn't really pertain to like GML. But for example, you could do some cool stuff, like you could do uh, negative one. And if you, this is for like, if you dynamically do not know the length of your list, like if you're writing a very complicated algorithm, you don't know what the length of your list is at this moment, you can do negative one. And that just kind of means start here and then grab the last value in your list. Um, yeah. And then let's print that and that should be five. There we go. Uh, and then there's something called splicing, which is, you know, um, where you can grab a, a range of a list. So there's, you know, you could do, let's see, you do zero through two. And I think it's inclusive exclusive. So it should do. It should grab uh, index zero and then stop before index two. So it would be index one and index zero and index one will, will be included. Yep. So three is cut off because it, it's inclusive exclusive based on the indices. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, that mainly just pertains, this pertains to uh, Python, not necessarily uh, any other um, language because lists are very, are very uh, exclusive to uh, Python and a few other languages. So, okay, so we covered lists. Now we're gonna go over queues. So let's see here. So queues, are FIFO. First in, first out. So it's literally like a line of people. Uh, the first people to step in line are the first people to get out of line. So they don't really have queues in uh, Python, but we can essentially facilitate them. So we'll call it my queue, and we will have it equal um, equal uh, what we had earlier. We'll do one, two, three, four, five. So we'll, we'll make this a list essentially, but um, we're gonna, we're gonna pretend it's a queue. We'll, we'll treat it as a queue. So what happens is, um, let's see, we're gonna have to do, um, let's see. We're gonna have to define a function here, so this is what we'll learn about functions. We're going to define, um, we'll just call it add. And what happens is it'll take in a new number. Oh, fantastic. So let's put it, let's put it before here. Oh, my bad. This is Python. We use that. There we go. So what happens is you're going to take, it takes in a queue and it takes in a new number. So, uh, in a function, which you start with def in, um, in Python will be, you'll say you're defining a function and then you call, that's the function name. And then these are parameters. Okay. So functions are really used for grouping code together for reusability. So it's kind of like, it makes it simple, reusable. We'll see here. So we'll say, um, let's see. So that's a list. So we'll do del q at zero. So what it's going to do is it's going to delete the zeroth index of the queue. And then it's going to do q dot append. And then we're going to do a new number. Okay. That's all it should do. So what's going to happen is if I do my q 
dot append six. What it should do is it should delete one off the front and then glue six onto the back because it deletes the zeroth index and then glues a new number onto the back. So let's see. Um, that should. Oh my bad. Now I need to print. I've got to print it just so it actually shows up here for us. Okay. Let's see. Aha. Okay. I forgot. So you'll learn about. Um, yeah. Let's see. So we'll do add. I forgot to actually call the function. My bad. So what happens is, see, so, so later on we can, like, do add myq7 and add myq8. And what that does is we only have to call one line of code here to essentially indicate an entire function. So I could have so many lines of code happening here, and I would only have to call one line of code to actually, like, trigger all of that logic. So that's the point of functions. So let's see if this works. Fantastic. So this is essentially a queue. Um, first in, first out. Okay, and now we will try to execute a, or facilitate a, um, a stack, which is the exact opposite. So let me just comment all of this out. Um, let's see, comment, comment, comment. Bingo, okay. Okay, so now stacks are first, are, uh, first in, last out. Or I guess people call it LIFO, which is last in, first out, yeah. Okay, so what's going to happen here is it's like, imagine imagine a stack of plates. It's literally a stack. The last plate you put on top is also the first plate that must come off. So we're going to call it my stack. And then we will say, um, we'll make a new, a new function called uh, add, which will take stack and new number. And then we will um, write the logic for that. So... Well, we'll actually have to define an add and a remove. So we'll do stack. Um, we'll do stack dot add, or we'll do uh, stack dot append. Yeah, because we're doing it with a list, so we have to facilitate a stack. We'll do stack dot append um, new number. Yeah, and that may be it. And we'll do. We'll call it stack. And you just pass in the stack, um, and then we'll do. We'll return, um, um, stack, and... Okay, so what's happening here is when you add and then pass in the name, so what we're going to do here is we'll define this down low, and then we'll say, let's add to my stack six. What's happening here, and then we will print my stack. So what's happening here is we're literally just having it put a six at the end of the list. It's kind of stack, imagine this is a, uh, a stack of plates and five is the top plate. And then we add six and we add that plate to the top. So let's see what's going on here. Um, let's see, oh my bad. That should be in parentheses. I didn't know if it would be able to interpret that correctly. So we'll actually do, we'll actually just call it um, last, we'll just call it last equals stack at index negative one. And then we'll remove it. It doesn't like that, so. Okay, so we, we, we store that in a variable, we grab the last variable, shove it in the variable last, and then we delete it out of the stack, or the list that we're pretending is a stack, and then we return, we return it. And what that means is every time we call that function, if we want, uh, it, when, wherever you call this function from, when it gets to that last line and it returns, calling this function now has like a value that it will send back to where it was called from. So, so okay, so we add six to it, and then we print the stack, and then we print sub stack. So what's going to happen is we add 6 to it. It should print it with 6 on the end, which is what's happening here. And then we're going to subtract it, or subtract the last in the, uh, integer we added, which was 6. We're going to print it because it's, because the call here will return that value. And then we're going to print print it again. Print the stack again. So it should say 1 through, uh, we add it here, we print 1 through 6, we remove 6, then we print 1 through 5. That should be exactly what happens here. Um, oh, my bad. They have to be defined before you use them. I forgot. It's very, it's very linear like that. Um, let's see. Stack, stack, stack. Oh, jeez. I called it stack instead of my stack. Jeez. Okay. Bam. Okay. So, so we print, uh, so we created our list, which we're printing as a stack. We added six to it. We printed it. Then we removed it from the stack, which returned 
the value we removed and we printed that because it, it's encapsulated here. And then we print uh, the stack again, which was our default original stack. So there we go. So that's stacks. It's a little more complicated than queues, uh, but that's mainly uh, just because we are facilitating it in Python. While Python doesn't actually have these data structures, in other uh, languages you may just be able to call, you know, create a stack or create a queue, uh, and you don't have to like pretend that a list is one of those. So um, yeah. Okay. So now we are going to be going over sets. So what we're going to do is sets are just like sets in math. Um, they have unique numbers. So uh, we'll compare them to a list. So we'll say my list equals one, two, whoop, one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll say my set equals one, two, three, four, five. Uh, oh, but the syntax for that to indicate it's actually set are curly braces, my bad. So now you do my list dot append, which is to me to attach to the end of it. We append the number six, and here we do my set dot add. And uh, I, I don't know why it uses a different word, because uh, it's not necessarily appending it onto the end, right? Because sets are uh, sets are unorderly. So if you ever ask a set to print itself, it will not be one, two, three, four, five. It will have those values, but it will not be necessarily in that order. So never rely on that. Um, so you can do my set dot add um, six. Uh, cool. So and then let's see what's happening here. So you'll pr oh, my bad, and then we will print my list, and then we will print my set. And now let's see what's happening. Okay, so it looks like it convert. It actually does cast it into a um, into maybe a list. That's interesting. So, in other languages, anyways, sets are absolutely random and unorderly. So never expect them to be in order. Um, yeah. But so now they're unique. So what's going to happen is if we do if we append five, oh, if we append five instead of six, five will appear at the end of the list. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, five. While the set being it can only hold unique values will be one, two, three, four, five, and it will stop there because five already exists in the set. So uh, that's just like in math. So that's how a set works, which uh, they're very useful. And let's see, let's now go over uh, maps and dictionaries. Okay, so in Python, they are called dictionaries. In other languages, they are called uh, maps. Uh, much easier to say as well. Um, yeah, so what's happening here? is uh, don't get too mixed up on the terminology. That doesn't really matter. But what's happening here is you bind one value to another. So what's happening is um, you have, it's literally, I guess it's kind of a, it, it's a mapping. A mapping is a better way to say it. You map, you know, column A to column B. And values in column A equate to values in column B. So let's say my map equals, and you start it here, and then you would say one. Oh yeah, let's, let's, let's do the alphabet. Let's say one maps to A. And you put a comma, and you say two maps to B. And three maps to C. Um, don't necessarily get this mixed up with arrays uh, because don't worry about indices. So actually, let's say, um, let's actually, yeah, I don't want you to get confused here. So let's actually say A maps to Apple and B maps to Battle and C maps to Cat. Okay, now we actually do um, print um, my map, and then we kind of throw we kind of throw in the brackets to indicate like an index, as if we're indexing into an array, but we're actually throwing in the index a, and that should put up apple. Um, let's see. Oh, my bad. After c, I supposed to put a colon, but I put in a. Uh, whoop! There we go. Yeah, yeah. So let's see. There we go. So we have a map to apple, b to battle, c to cat, and then we print index quote unquote index a, which is apple. Um, so later on, like for example, in um, in like the game we're making right now, where every soldier has a unique identifier number, and I map that to the soldier themselves. So whenever you're like referencing that soldier, you would make function calls based on their identifier, and that's mapped to the actual soldier himself. So that's just an applicable uh, instance of a map. Okay, and then now let's move on to um, loops. Actually, before we do loops, we need to understand a conditional. So this is where you start actually messing around with um, logic. So let's see. So what happens is now you're, these are conditionals, things that only happen if certain other things happen. This is how you have dynamic logic. This is how things go in opposite directions. So let's say um, x equals 3, y equals 5. And then we say if... And then, then you need an expression encapsulated with uh, parentheses. It's not necessary for Python, but it is a good convention. It helps it be more legible, and it's required in a lot of other languages, such as Java. So you would say if x is less than y, print, print, um, print y 
is greater than x. I don't know if it'll just randomly plug those in, but it is Python after all. So let's cast that. Let's see, there's ways to cast it. Um, I think it should be. Or maybe, oh, my bad. I forgot to put the plus signs to kind of concatenate, or concatenate um, the strings here. So. Okay, I'm not really sure. Oh, was I? Oh man, I was making the wrong calls here. Okay, let's just do Python tutorial.py. Okay, okay. so we actually need to put those spaces there. So what's happening is uh, we're checking to see if if x is less than y. So if 3 is less than 5, which is true. So if true, know that. If true, which it is, we will come into this block of code to execute. So it'll say print. So here it's called a cast. So, y, so when you print, it wants a string inside as a parameter. But x and y are integers. So what happens is... There's something called casting, which is essentially where you type in str, short for string, and as a parameter, you pass in something that's not a string, and it returns a string version of that. So we're saying print the string version of 5 glued to is greater than glued to the string version of 3. And so that is exactly what is happening here. 5 is greater than 3. Bam. Now, uh, now we can do something called else. So if, if you come to an if block... And this fails. So if this thing evaluates to false, this conditional evaluates to false, you will then instead execute this. And so we'll say print string of y is less than, is not greater, because it could be equal to, is not greater than string x. And then once uh, we're outside of that, you can just do whatever, then print hello. Okay, so it's obviously going to print 5 is greater than 3, and then hello, but what if we make them equal to one another? 5 is not greater than 5. That is true. So this evaluated to false, and then, and then went to the else block, and then printed that. So uh, in Python, uh, blocks are indicated with indentions. So you could actually do if yada yada yada, if yada yada yada, if yada yada yada, and we get, we can do, net, it's called nested conditionals. So real code looks like that. It's very deep and dense and complex. But this is just for basic stuff. And so in other uh, in other languages, indentions are conventions. So you should indent to indicate blocks, but it's actually indicated with curly brackets. So you would say, in like any other language pretty much, you would say, if x is less than y, and then you would do that. And then you make sure this brace, the last brace, is in line with that. So it would, it would look like... Like that. And then so these would be your conditionals, conditionals and then code. And it just kind of kind of nests inwards like that. So now, uh, this is what it actually looks like in GML. So now, um, okay, so I've shown you conditionals. And now that you know what conditionals are, we can actually go into what is a loop. Um, yes, so conditionals have been covered, loops. So now we're going to do a loop here. So we say for, and that's just convention. You say i equals zero. So we're going to say bam. i equals zero, hang on, okay, yeah, i equals zero, and then while i is less than ten, and then i plus plus, hang on, let's see, I, I may be stuck on the convention of, uh, of a for loop, is there no, is there no way to do iterations based on a, like a, a typical conventional, okay, so there isn't, so, um, It'll be easier to explain in Python, it's a little more conventional, but we'll say uh, my list again equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we have a list. And we say for number in my list, print number. So what's going to happen is instead of like doing, you know, print my list at 0, you know, print my list, blah, 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 and then having to do each one, uh, it literally iterates through the entire list and will print each number. So we should get a vertical line over here of 1 through 5, which we do. And, um, yeah. So the how that works in other real languages is more like this. So what you would do is you would say for 
and then you would say you would start at like an iteration count. You would say for i equals zero, and then while i is less than my list dot length, or maybe it's just len in Python, yeah. And then you would do that. So this is bad syntax in Python, but this is what it would look like in another language such as GML. You so what happens is you start at zero. And then this is a conditional. So this is the initialization, conditional, and then the finish. So this starts off, this kickstarts everything. And then pretty much while this remains true, do the block of code. And then right when the block of code is done, do this. So what it would do is it would start at index zero. Um, it would start at zero and it would print index zero. Then it would increment i. So plus plus just means plus equals one. So, so, uh, uh, and, uh, oh, so these, these all mean the same thing, by the way. So it's i plus equals one, i plus plus. And what's more intuitive, like off the bat, is i equals i plus one. So this is what's actually happening, i equals i plus one. While these are like shorthand notations for it, but this one doesn't work for any number that's not one. So, so that, and that is the same, but that's not the same as that. So, um, so this is just a shorthand for like increment. So what it would do is you'll go to zero, print it at zero, then increment. And then go to uh, index one and print it, then increment. Then go to index three or uh, two, increment, print it, etc. Keeps going as long as this remains true, while i is less than my list dot length. So what happens is, what's cool is this function actually returns five. So the length is five, but the last index is four. So that's exactly what we want. We so four will be the last index we increment to, and four is less than the length, and it will print five, and then the loop will stop. So that is how a loop works. It doesn't seem intuitive at first, but it clicks very easily in time. So this is how it works in other languages. And it would actually be like that. You have you, uh, you have that. This is like verbatim what it would look like in any other language but Python. But Python, but Python has a super simple one that involves a lot less stuff. Um, so we can get rid of that. And this is how it cleanly looks in Python. So that is a loop. And then we'll go over variable types. So there's a, yeah, what, it's pretty basic. There's those ints which are just whole numbers, then there's floats, which are decimal numbers, and then there are cars, uh, they may go, yeah, cars, which, well, I guess I shouldn't pluralize it, because that's what they actually go by. So there's int, float, car, um, string, and um, int, float, car, string, there's other ones. Uh, there's other ones like double, but you don't, uh, that's like a really long integer. Um, so cars are a single character, they're indicated by single quotes, and then strings are essentially indicated by double quotes, and they are multiple cars together. They are uh, so they're different types. Integers indicated by like a five, float indicated by like 5.0, 5, .0, or 5 you know, point whatever. Um, and then double is just when you need a, you know, when you need a huge number, you should use that instead of an int. Int float car string double. I feel like I'm forgetting something else. So we will do, um, int is like five, float is like 5.1, car is like a, string is like hello, and then double is huge int. Um, yeah, you would never really use a double, but, so there's the different variable types. So we've gone over lists, um, which are native to Python, use arrays in other, um, languages, primarily. Some of them will have both. You use queues, uh, which are data structures in other languages, but we had to pretend what they were in this language in Python by using lists, which are, um, first in, first out. Stacks, which are last in, first out. Sets, which are like mathematical sets, unique, uh, unique values only. Maps, which is column A mapped to column B, and values in A are mapped to, it's a one-to-one, -one. well, uh, uh, let's see here. One, oh, what is it called in uh, linear algebra? I don't remember, but one thing, uh, it's called key to value. That's it. There's keys to values. Um, one key is mapped to one value, but one key or multiple keys can point to the same value. So like A can be mapped to dog, B can be mapped to dog, C can be mapped to dog, but, um, A can't be mapped to horse, dog, cat, snake, right? So one key, one key, uh, one key is mapped to a value, um, is mapped to one value, but multiple keys can be mapped to the same value. So, um, yeah. And then there's loops, which are like reiterations. It's like when you want blocks of code being executed with just, uh, a, a bunch of times, but with maybe just slight, slight variations. Um, it doesn't even have to vary it. You could, you could literally just say, I mean, you could say four, no, we would say, uh, oh, in Python, it would have to be four I in range. Oh, that's kind of how you do it. You would do between zero and whatever that number is, you would say print hello, and then this will happen. It's still going. Look, 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 look at this. I don't even know when that's over. Nope, it's not even over. Okay, so you print hello that many times. So it, you know, it's just, it's just, uh, yeah, it's a loop. 
So then we have conditionals, which is actually like branched logic, like, oh, if this is true, go this way. If it's not, if else, go that way. And then we have uh, conditionals, which in other languages are used for loops, uh, for loops to work. And then we have variable types, um, which are rather important, but it's kind of hard to show them off here. So, um, yeah, so for the most part, uh, I mean, now you should be able to do whatever you want in Python, more or less. Um, and it should lay the foundation for other languages, um, primarily GML. Um, aside from a little bit of the syntax, where uh, in, uh, instead of using colon to indicate, like, a function or a loop, or to indicate, like, I'm about to begin a block, instead of that, uh, you would use curly brackets. And, uh, and indentions are not mandatory, but they're still used anyway out of convention. So, yeah, so thanks for, thanks for watching through this, and uh, I hope it was useful. Cool. I also forgot to mention that Python, as well as GML, are... Um, uh, dynamically typed languages so in other languages if you're gonna when you make a variable you actually have to define the type so in java you would have to say int uh you know number equals five so int is kind of a preface that's like okay this this variable is an integer and this is the value and then if you tried to do um number equals a right after that you would get a, a compile time error because number has been defined as an integer. Python does not care. It's an interpreted language. It's dynamically typed. It goes in the moment. It cares. It kind of reads per line. So if you do number, oh, and that's why you also don't have to specify a type. So you can say number equals five, and then you say print number, and then you can say number equals a, and then you can say oh, is a, and then you can say print number, and you will get five and a, because Python does not care, which is pretty cool. Um, and same thing with GML. So uh, yeah, that's very useful, very powerful, but um, static helps in the sense of if you have a big, monolithic, huge program and you see number, you may not know what value is coming in through that front door because it could be 5, it could be A, it could be null, undefined. There's no telling. So um, it's more flexible, but it's it, it makes things a little complicated down the road. Um, cool, thanks. So also, um, we can go over basic, um, basic arithmetic. So what you can do is... Um, there's subtraction, addition, um, division, modding, um, flooring, rounding, stuff like that. So, um, if you do 2 divided by, so 2 divided by, or let's say, let's do print. Um, we'll do print x here. And we'll say um, x equals 2 divided by 2. And that should give us 1. And if we use a double slash. Cool. So, um, we'll talk about, if we haven't already, we'll talk about, uh, Integers versus floats. So at least in Python, one slash indicates float, float division. And you can always tell a float based on, even if it's like an integer value, it'll have point zero afterwards. So one slash is float division, two slashes is integer. And why that matters is if you do like an odd number, like two divided by three, it always rounds down, so it floors. So two divided by three is, um, you know, point, what is it? Uh, point something. So what happens is, it's less than 1. 2 divided by 3 is less than 1, so it'll give you 0. It's integer division, right? And then if you do 2 divided by 3, you actually will get the decimal point. Bingo, it's 0.67, more or less. So we're that in the now. So, uh, you, know, you, you know, you know your basic stuff, you know, 2 plus 3 or minus 3. Um, let's also do, let's do mod. So 2 mod 3. So what that means is it's like, uh, it's a remainder. It's a remainder equation. So what's... 2 divided by 3 and the remainder. So you do integer division. So 2 div so two divided by 3 is what? Or 2 divided by 3 is what? It's 0, right? Because we're, uh, uh, because 3 does not fit into 2 even a single time. So you do integer division and then it's the remainder. So what's 2 integer divided by 3 and then the remainder? Well, that will be 2. So let's do, um, let's do 100 modded by 51. What is that? should be 49. Because what's 100 divided by 51? It's actually 1, because it won't fit twice. And then we have a 49 remainder. And then if we do 100 modded by 50, it's actually 0, because it divides evenly in there twice, and then we have a remainder of 0. So, um, so yeah, so we have addition, we have subtraction, we have, uh, oh, we have a integer division, and then we have, um, float division, and then we have, um, oh, multiplication, which is an asterisk. Um, yeah, and then some languages may let you do squaring, or, uh, or to the power, so pow, uh, 
power is usually indicated by either a double asterisk or that. I don't know if it works in Python, but just know that if you see that somewhere, I mean, you can experiment with that. Uh, I don't know if it'll work in Python. Um, and yeah, and there's for actual um, arithmetic. And if that doesn't work, you can probably do um, import math as m. And then if you ever needed to do power, you could do like x equals m dot pow. And then do 2, 3. And so now x equals 2 to the 3, more or less, something like that. Um, something like that, I'm not sure. And yeah, so you just import the math library and call it m. And then to address that library, you preface it. And then you're like, okay, I want this function from that library. And then here's base, here's power, and then, um, and then you print that. Oh, jeez, it doesn't want any of that. Math. Maybe it's just lowercase? Oh, wow. Wow, that actually works, so, um, yeah. So that's how you do it, 2 to the 3. Is, uh, yeah. And if you want to, uh, recall, or instantly given a new command that you just gave, press up on the arrow key, and it'll, it'll pull up the last, uh, the last command you just gave, and you press enter to run. So, uh, yep, there's the uh, there's arithmetic. Uh, generally for all languages, that 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 that's the exact syntax in arithmetic. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, thanks.